I'm pretty proud now to say that I know a lot of ingredients in Vietnam. I mean, when I go to the market, I'm not lost. But for example, something I love to do is when foreigner chefs come to Vietnam, I take them to the market. So hello guys, and welcome to Chow, a program brought to you by the Saigon Times, where aspirants can share their feeling and experience living in the country. For this episode, I would like to introduce a very special guest coming a long way from France. With uh, the passion for exploring the depth of flavors, he has left a remarkable mask in the culinary world. Now please welcome Mr. Benoît Chano. Hello. You can call me Chu Ben, it's easier because my French name is not, not easy to pronounce. So like I mentioned in the introduction, you are the food critic and you also have a acute palace and a strong passion to explore about the flavor. So when you come to Vietnam, so this episode we talk about nước mắm or fish sauce. So can you share with us uh, the Eureka moments when you first tasted nước mắm and this made you uh, want to explore more about this ingredient? Yes, absolutely. So uh, to make the long story short, mm -hmm. um, I got stuck in Vietnam during COVID. Mm -hmm. My first job was to be a journalist, food critic and TV host about cooking shows. But I found myself locked in the country. And uh, instead of wasting my time, I decided to explore the countryside to understand how people eat, what kind of ingredients they use, how they cook. So I started traveling everywhere, especially in the north, in the mountains with my motorbike. And every time I was seeing someone cooking at home, I was putting my head at the window or, or trying to ask, okay, can I, can I look how you cook? I wanted to understand. Mm -hmm. So I discovered some spices like uh, hat zoi, uh, hat mat mat, uh, mat ken, things like that, that European people don't know. And people were using that. And of course, you know how nice Vietnamese people are. Every time I was asking to understand how they were cooking, they were inviting me and I was tasting the food. Mm -hmm. So at first I was focused on the spices, everywhere I was going. But one day I arrived in the Quang Nam. Mm. I arrived in a small village and in this village uh, there are 60 families all making nook mam. Yeah. They have like a factories, family. very traditionally, mm. but factories. Mm. And when I arrived there, I went to a factory and the nook mam was leaking from a big tank. Yes. So I took a spoon, I put it in my mouth, and that was the Eureka moment. It feels like I had found the missing link. It was the link between all the various tastes I had in Vietnam and maybe more widely in Asia. Mm. I mean, Nuk Mam was the key. It was the link be between everything. The saltiness, the umami, the um, the flavor, mm. uh, the ab ability to enhance everything without covering the taste. Mm. I mean, the best test you can make, you put some nook mam on a cucumber, True. you eat and you still feel the taste of the cucumber. Mm -hmm. So I got fascinated by this product. Mm -hmm. um, so as, at that moment, I had only one obsession. I wanted to learn how to make it. We must uh, accept the fact that nook mam or fish sauce had a very pungent aromatic taste. Uh, it's kind of uh, unfamiliar with many foreigners. So have you ever played prank on some bodies by adding a dash of fish sauce into the meal and what's the reaction? So into the meal, I mean, we are French. Mm. In France, we eat some cheese that you could never eat because it's very, very smelly too. Uh -huh. So um, the jokes I could make is to put some nook mam on someone's hand or on the clothes. Yeah. And then they're like, what smells like that? <laughs> but, but very quickly I took that seriously. I mean, nook mam is no joke. Yes. It's, it's the very first superfood mm -hmm. in the history of mankind. Yes. Because instead of being Vietnamese and having these traditions, uh, as a journalist, I made a lot of research. So the origins of Nuk Mam mm -hmm. comes from the Roman Empire. 2,500 years ago, mm -hmm. the Romans made something called garum. 
garum, it was fermented fish with salt. And the liquid uh, was put in some small bottles and all the Roman soldiers, legionnaires, they had that at their belts. And when the Roman Empire was trying to conquer the world, uh, when they were going to lands where there was nothing to eat, the Roman soldiers could use these liquids with some water, make a broth, and that contains proteins, omega-3, omega-6, omega-9. 100% fish sauce only, no food? Fish sauce and water. Huh. You have proteins. You have what it takes to keep on moving. Wow. I mean, it's, it's a real superfood. Yeah. It's fantastic. Mm. What's a, the first time that you learned how to create fish sauce? Oh, that was very difficult. So basically, I was in that small village in Quang Nam, mm -hmm. not speaking Vietnamese. Yes. And especially in Quang Nam, they don't really speak Vietnamese, they speak Quang Namese. Yes. You know, they don't say Quang Nam, yeah, they yeah, say Buon Nam. Yeah, Buon Nam. <laughs> so there was this old lady making the fish sauce and I came to see her and tried to explain, I want to learn how to make the fish sauce with you. So she looked at me and she said, no, go away. <laughs> So I was disappointed, but I had a hammock. Mm -hmm. So I put my hammock in front of her factory, went to buy some bind me, stay in my hammock, and I made her understand. I will stay here until you say yes. So I stayed in my hammock. And she was, every time she was going, she was looking at me like, this guy is crazy. So after three days, she was like, okay, come on. And she showed me the proportions, the quality of the fish, the salt, the proportion, how to mix it together and then ferment. Mm -hmm. So I stood a long time with them in the factory. Mm -hmm. But you have to know something about Nukmam. You have two steps. You have the fermentation. Mm -hmm. When it drops, the liquid is clear, just looks like whiskey, yes. golden. Mm -hmm. But then after you put it in some jars under the sun, and then it goes black to what you call Nukmam Ni. Okay, so it becomes black and very smelly. But I was most, more interested in the first version. The one that is fresh, still smelling like fish. So I took these bottles. So this old lady was like, nah, you cannot take that. It's not ready. And I say, okay, it's not ready for you, but it's ready for me. So I took that back home. And at home at that time, I had a big collection of spices because I was, you know, as a journalist, I was writing down all the spices I could find and like the taste, uh, the weight, how to use it, blah, blah, blah. And I had some spices. I opened the bottle of fish sauce, I put the spices inside, yes. close the bottle and say, okay, we'll see what it, what it's gonna do. But at that time in Quang Nam, it was the beginning of uh, autumn. Yeah. So I discovered the typhoons. Uh, <laughs> so I had 13 yeah, yeah, typhoons, yeah. including one destroying my house. Then the flooding, then the heavy rains. So I forgot the bottle. And two months later, I took the bottle back and when I opened, it was smelling like smoked fish. Just like smoked salmon or smoked... Ah, yeah. And the perfume was just amazing. Uh, and I put my finger, I tried, I was like, wow, it doesn't really taste like traditional Nokman. Mm -hmm. it, it tastes like smoky and it was very umami. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I had in my house some empty sprays. I was using to fight the mold <laughs> originally. Yeah. And then I had that bottle, I had some spray. I had the idea to put the liquid in the spray mm. and to use it as a seasoning, you know, just like that. It was, so I was using that everywhere. So I went to order any kind of food, salad, spring rolls, even pizza, cheese, and ch 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 spraying spray that. all over? Yeah. Wow. And I started using the fish sauce just as a liquid salt, mm -hmm. but liquid salt with a lot of nutrients mm. and the smoky and umami flavor. And that, that's how it was born. Mm. So I was in Hanoi at a gastronomy festival mm. and uh, I met a very famous high gastronomy Vietnamese chef. And I had the spray of Nuk Mam. So he saw me spraying Nuk Mam and he asked me, why would you spray Nuk Mam? And I answered, because you never did it before. Mm -hmm. He was like, okay. And then he was curious. So he said, okay, let me try. So he tried in a spoon and he was like, ah, it's not possible that you made that. Mm -hmm. I was like, why, why is that? And he said, 
I feel like I'm 10 years old back in my mother's kitchen. And then I had it. I was high on emotion because I had found a, li a link between something brand new, a creation, and Vietnamese cultural history of taste. Because if it could reach the 10 years old boy he was inside with the high gastronomy chef, I started thinking that I found something. And he was also like that. So now um, a lot of uh, Vietnamese and foreign chefs are using the fish sauce spray in their kitchen in high gastronomy. Yeah. Sometimes on the meat, on some pigeon, on some special dishes, or even sometimes they bring the plate on the table and just spray a little bit because you have all the flavor coming up. Mm -hmm. So that was the that was the that was the first step in uh, my Nook Mom adventure. And talking about your products here, like bottom here, I can see it's, it's very beautiful packages here. So uh, Vietnam is very famous for fish sauce. And what's special about your products to stand out of the you know like competitions in the market? So first, this product is completely unique because it's been infused several months with some spices so it's changing the flavor mm. so you still have the flavor of fish sauce but you have a smoky umami flavor mm -hmm. that makes it completely unique second thing that is unique is the spraying so usually you use fish, fish sauce for cooking or yes, for dipping yeah. but when it's about dipping you use fish sauce plus water plus sugar plus chili yes and uh, so you don't have the pure fish sauce. If you try to dip in pure fish sauce, it's too salty yes. because it's too, too much. Salty, yeah. So I decided to put in a spray so you can decide the right amount you need. For example, when you have a beautiful spring roll with nice ingredients, if you dip it, you will lose the taste of the ingredients because you have too much. You cannot control the amount of fish sauce you put. If you use a spray, then you can put just a little bit just to enhance and have the full flavor of pure fish sauce. This is a proposition, you know? I remember when I was a kid, I come from the south of France, and in, in my region, we make olive oil. I could never imagine doing something else with olive oil, but what we traditionally do, because I was born in the olive oil. And for you, Vietnamese people, you were born in fish sauce. So it's very difficult to step back and start thinking, can we do something different with that? And I'm, I feel so much love for your culinary traditions uh -huh. that I wanted to try to do something. I mean, so this is what the main difference on the market. Mm. And of course, starting with the smoky one, after I started working on different kinds. So for example, this one, you know, you have, you have chili, chili inside the yes. bottle. Uh, I'm making another one with uh, the green oranges, mm. you know, and the orange skin yes. to make so I'm trying to work on different flavor wow. using the fish sauce. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm also trying to, to lift up the fish sauce into premium mm -hmm. luxury products. Yes. First, because the, the nutrients are amazing. And then because, as you know, the Michelin Guide arrived in Vietnam. And I really, I'm really sure that the Michelin Guide will bring rewards to the chefs who are using Vietnamese products. And I want Vietnam to be proud of the high quality of this fish sauce. When I left a look at your products here, the one that impressed me most is this one, which is. But I keep wondering from the first moment and take a look at this one is, it's kind of lacking this one ingredient, very familiar to the Vietnamese, you can guess. Tell me. It's the garlic. So why, why don't you choose the garlic to put it in? You're right to say that. So before I put the, the yeah. chili inside, the fish sauce has been infused with garlic also. Mm. Of course. Yeah. I mean, I've been studying enough Vietnamese culinary culture to know that you cannot put chili without garlic. Uh -huh. So there is garlic inside, but you cannot see it. Mm. The fish sauce has been infused with garlic, then filtered, then I put the the chili. Mm -hmm. You're right. If your product has a personality, what's the, uh, what are the three words that you're going to describe them? As a personality, I would say 
Elegance. Elegance. Feminine. Feminine. Yeah. And strong. Strong. Yeah. 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 It makes a strong difference. Mm -hmm. But but mostly I would say elegant. Mm. I like the idea that it's elegant. The smell is elegant. Mm. I, I I don't want people to be like, ew, it's smelly. You know, it's like, oh. It they must have a taste. Yes. <laughs> you know, because I mean, I know enough about cooking mm. to know that the first way to your stomach mm. is the nose. Yes. You know, you start by smelling the food mm. and then it drives you to eat. And when you put that on the food, especially when it's hot or warm, mm -hmm. you have the smoky, fishy flavor mm. coming. It's just like grabbing your nose and taking you down to the plate. Yeah. I'm talking about the ingredients because we dive into the sauce ingredients for Nuk Mam of this sauce. I think it's a crucial for choosing the fresh and quality ones, right? Yeah, so first, what's very important is to choose the, the small black anchovy. Mm and only this kind of fish. Well, you can make, basically you can make fish sauce with any kind of fish. But the traditional I like is with the black anchovy. Yeah. And what is special is when you fish this, these anchovies in the north, in the center, or in the south, it's not the same. Because you know when the water is colder, the fish has a little bit more fat under the skin, and the fat is, will change slightly uh -huh. the taste. Yes, yes. So first, what's important is the quality of fish. The fish must be very, very fresh, almost still alive when you use it. Then the quality of the salts. So it needs to come from salt marsh, mm -hmm. the sea salt. Yes. Uh, as much as, it, as it's been collected traditional way, mm -hmm. just like, you know, hoamui, fleur de sel, yeah. salt flower, hoamui, mm -hmm. it, it's even better. Then there is the process, the, the balance. So the traditional recipe is three kilos of fish for one kilo of salt, mm. okay? And this is a very, uh, a very famous mathematical balance, mm. three for one. Yeah. I mean, it's a perfect balance. Uh -huh. And it comes from as long as we are here as humans. So when mixing together and uh, crushing them together, then you have, you can start the fermentation process. Mm -hmm. About the times that you store the fish in the, the container, is it important to you? Yes, the time, the temperature, everything is important. Mm. So in, in the traditional making, you cannot control the temperature. I mean, the tanks are outside under a roof. True. But basically the temperature in Vietnam when you make that is around 30, 35 degrees. Mm. 35 degrees is the best temperature for fermentation. Mm -hmm. And the level of salt, it allows the good bacteria to develop and the bad, not the bad bacteria, mm. because you need bacteria for lacto-fermentation. Mm -hmm. And lacto-fermentation nowadays in the whole world, everybody talks about that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is the most fashionable yes. food you can find. Mm. When we talk about superfood, I mean, you take a look at the United States, mm. You had Anthony Bourdain and uh, Gordon Ramsay talking about Vietnamese cuisine as probably the best and the more healthy cuisine. Mm -hmm. Now you have Vietnamese restaurants opening everywhere across the world mm -hmm. because you have traditionally the best food and the best ingredients. I mean, how come in this country everybody spends the days eating and eating and never gets fat? Yeah. It's just because your food is perfectly balanced. Uh, I mean, in my country, you have a lot of obesity and yeah. people getting fat and they eat less than in Vietnam. So I needed to, to, to understand. Mm. If you only use salt, iodized salt, it's not good for health. Mm. If you replace the salt by, by the yeah. fish sauce, mm -hmm. you have salt, saltiness, you have nutrients, you have amazing things. Mm. And that indulged me to make research and research and research about the, the Vietnamese ingredients. I heard many people around me say that the longer you store the fish sauce, the better quality they will serve you. Is it right or wrong? It's neither right nor wrong. The history is that when you 
when you storage the fishes outside under high temperatures, it goes, it's raising the level of nitrogen. So sometimes on the bottles of fish oils, you have a percentage, yeah. which is the percentage of proteins. Mm -hmm. So the proteins are developing. It, it becomes what you call nuk mam mm. Okay? Nuk mam nyi. But this comes from a time when it was hard to, um, to keep the, the fresh products. It had no fridge, uh, it, high heat. Mm -hmm. So rising the level of nitrogen was a guarantee to keep it. Yeah. So now in everybody's mind, the good nuk mam is black color, very smelly, but it doesn't smell really like fish. It smells more like uh, dirty socks. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> <coughs> and this is the nook mamni. I mean, I will not, I cannot say anything. Some people really love that mm. and it's okay for me. The nook mam I like is just after fermentation, when yeah. it still smells like fish, and then I can put my spices in it and the, I have the balance between the fishiness and the spice mm. to, to create a, a new taste. So this means that you learn how to make fish sauce from a Vietnamese local? Oh yes. Yeah. So have you ever experienced a lost inspiration moment? And can you share with us that story? I, I, had, a, I had a lot of lost in translation moments. So basically, at that time, I was not speaking a single word of Vietnamese except uh, Xin Chao, Kamen. Wow. That, that was it. So, but I, I was trying to speak with my hands. And when I met this old lady who was cooking the, the Nuk Mam, I tried to use my best friend at that time, which was Google Translate. <laughs> but Google Translate, uh, first, this woman was not able to read. Mm -hmm. So I had to speak and Google Translate was trying to translate, but it was translating completely wrong. So I remember one day I was like, I just want to try the Nuk Mam. Mm. And she looked at me like that. She said, okay, don't move. She went back and she came with a gray paste, put a spoon, said, okay, take that. And I tried, and that was Mam Tom. Ah, yeah. It was my first experience. I was like, whoa, <laughs> <laughs> that is strong. Now I can eat Mam Tom like that. I, mm. I love that. But at that time, it was it was pretty strange. Yes. <clears throat> so she didn't didn't really understand what I wanted. Mm -hmm. I had to show her, put my hands in it, and say, "Okay, I want this. <laughs> That's yeah. what I want." Yeah. Very accurate, right? I mean, you know, when you really want something, you always find a yes. way. Huh? Mm -hmm. So it's a full of potentials that the other people can tap, right? So what do you advise for other people who want to come to Vietnam and sourcing really good and high quality ingredients like you are doing right now? I would advise them, don't try to come and source products. I'm already there. <laughs> uh, what could I say? No, I would say be passionate, curious, patient, and if it has to come to you, it will come to you. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't, come ask me. I also know that you are a food critic and food and beverage expert consultants in uh, Paris, right? Yes. Hanoi, Haiphong, and now in Saigon. So don't be humble and share with us your journey. Okay, so basically uh, I've been working as a food critic and food journalist mm -hmm. in France uh, for over a, a decade and um, I was lucky enough to eat in more than 200 Michelin star restaurants. Wow, 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 wow. But in each restaurant I was not eating just like a, a guest or a customer. Oh. I was eating with my notebook, mm -hmm. writing down everything. The setup, the cooking, the service, everything. Mm -hmm. Because I needed to be able to talk about it. So that's forged me a real experience. Mm -hmm. And I had a lot, I have a lot of friends who are chefs. Michelin star chefs. The problem with them is that they work so much that they can never leave their kitchen. So they don't know what's going on in the rest of the world. Uh, yeah. So most of the time in Paris, they first called me and, okay, Ben, tell me how I can do things better, change my way of working. What did you see here and there? Mm -hmm. And what kind of advice can you give me? Because you know, if you're only working on your project, sometimes you, you lose the competition in the market. You need to know what the market looks like. Mm -hmm. So this is how I started being a consultant in France. Then uh, in Vietnam, 
My consultings are a lot about the service field because, um, I mean, I cannot give advices to Vietnamese chefs about cooking. I can give advices to foreign chefs when they want to go towards fusion. So how to mix Western and Asian influences. This is very interesting, uh, talking with the chefs. But uh, I have developed a special method called enter training. It's like a mix of training and entertainment. Mm -hmm. Because I've noticed that the way the waiters and waitresses and the service field is done in Vietnam, it, it's not the same as it's done in the Western countries. And as Vietnam wants to attract more and more tourists and more and more foreigners, I decided to, to teach the waiters and waitresses how to work Western style. So how to make little jokes mm -hmm. with the customers. Mm -hmm. um, for example, in Vietnam, the waiters and waitresses are used to bend a lot like that, yes, you know, true. and be very respectful. So I need to unlearn that. Mm. Or for example, there is something like I've noticed that in Vietnam, when you're at the restaurant, you start eating. Sometimes you have the waiter just standing in front of you and watching you eating. <laughs> yeah. And um, for Western people, it's just like uh, yeah. annoying, yeah, yeah. you know, but you never dare say that. So in my training, uh, I, I ask them, okay, walk everywhere, keep an eye on the customers, but don't, don't stare at them, <laughs> things like that. But instead of doing that the traditional way, I'm trying to do it as a game, mm. you know, like playing games, role playing. And that has pretty much good effect. And of course, as a big advice, I advise the chefs to cook with my fish. <laughs> but this is uh, this industry, I think it's an ever changes industry. So how do you, you keep yourself fresh and relevant at the same time? Look at that. <laughs> I go to restaurants. <laughs> I mean... Very I, practical. Yeah. I mean, I need to I need to be uh, to be informed and aware about what's going on. So yeah. I need to discover every time there is a new restaurant, uh, something new that is successful. I need to try, but I also need to build day after day a strong, very strong knowledge about Vietnamese cuisine, Vietnamese ingredients. I'm pretty proud now to say that. I know a lot of ingredients in Vietnam. I mean, when I go to the market, I'm not lost. But for example, something I love to do is when foreigner chefs come to Vietnam, I take them to the market. And I always ask them, okay, show me all the products that you've never tried. And they're like, oh, this and this and this and this. Okay, let's buy everything and we'll try. For example, let, let me play a game with you. Was it? Okay, give me your hands. It's like a serum. It's a bit like a serum. It looks like a serum. Can you try this? Okay. Taste it. Yeah. Really? Yeah, it's edible. It's very strong. So for, for the little story, I will tell you what it is because obviously you don't know what it is. Uh. Uh, it comes from the sea. You feel the sea taste. So that was the favorite source of Emperor Min Mang. Mm -hmm. the son of Emperor Zalong. Yeah. Okay? This sauce comes from Quang Ngai. Mm -hmm. And uh, when the emperor discovered this sauce, it was made in a small village and he told the whole village, okay, you don't have any more to pay taxes as long as you give me the whole production of that. Mm. So I discovered this by studying Vietnamese history. And through history, I've noticed that. So, I, okay, I want to discover that. Mm. This is a fermented sauce made with sea urchin. Sea urchin. Mam nhum. Nhum. Yes. <laughs> but now... Fermented one? It's fermented sea oh. urchin. Sometimes I meet Vietnamese chef. I make them try this and they're like, what is that? Where does that come from? I say, it comes from your country, my friend. <laughs> and I'm very proud that I have time to explore this country yeah. and to be able to bring some toys to the chefs. You know, it's just like Santa Claus, so like, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> so I, yes. like, I like the idea to bring some toys to the chef mm -hmm. and then watch them play because then every time you bring a new ingredient to a chef, 
It's just like you put a coin in the machine for creativity. So this is also the very first times that I try for mantis algae. I have status for mantis fish, for mantis shrimp. But this is the very first time. Thank you a lot. You're welcome. I'm happy to make you discover that. It's very difficult to go in this, this area, you know, mm -hmm. Nai. Yes. Nai, it's, it's difficult to go there. Mm -hmm. But uh, I met a lot of amazing people in Nai. Yeah. So in Sahun, mm -hmm. I met an amazing lady. I call her the queen of the salt. Wow. So she's fighting as much as she can to preserve the salt march. Mm -hmm. So she's working as a cooperative with 200 people collecting the salt. Yeah. And they are all fighting to preserve the biodiversity, the environment, yeah. working the salt in a very traditional way. So I'm also working with her to create a new range of salt, very high quality, premium. And I'm trying to help as much as I can people in Vietnam to lift up the standards and to meet the standards of the world high gastronomy mm -hmm. because I believe that this country is full of treasures. There are, there are amazing products everywhere. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they just need to be to be collected the right way, uh, you know, not searching for immediate profits, but trying to reach high standards in quality. Mm -hmm. And people like that, I mean, it's always a treasure to meet them because she's been teaching me a lot about salt. And then I suggest her some ideas and for example, now we are mixing the urchin with the salt to make a special wow. salt with the urchin taste. Yes. And cool. I mean, this, this country has so much to offer mm. and to the world's gastronomy. Mm. So I'm thinking, of course, about the Vietnamese market, mm -hmm. but I really want to show the whole world how beautiful and powerful are Vietnamese products when they are made in this direction. And as a food expert and specialist in gastronomy, I mean, I love the idea to be the, the link between Vietnamese traditional products and high gastronomy worldwide. So you have a lot of experience uh, interactions with the locals in Vietnam, right? And I, I remember that you stayed here like uh, almost 13 years already, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, the first time I came in Vietnam, 13 years ago, I was uh, still at that time working on French television and I was called by VTV mm. uh, to become a teacher in master classes as a media expert. So I was coming three to four times a year in Vietnam. Uh, having master class, so teaching people who are already working for VTV mm. to improve their skills, for example, in uh, how to uh, create a TV show, how to film a documentary, how to edit, uh, how to MC, uh, many things. And uh, that gave me the occasion, of course, to discover Vietnam. And uh, the most beautiful thing for me in Vietnam is Vietnamese people mm -hmm. and I had great experiences with these people who were journalists and professional of television mm -hmm. because in I would like to say in exchange for the knowledge I was bringing about television they took me into uh, their own Vietnam and the first thing you know how important it is in Vietnam yes the food <laughs> so they took me to eat everywhere so the first food I discovered was in Hanoi and um, Every time I was coming, basically I was coming to work two weeks, mm. but I was staying at least two or three more weeks yeah. to discover the country, the culture and everything. But I must admit that I fell in love at first sight with Vietnam. And if people want to invest their money into your products, where can they find you? If you take a look at my website, it's www.chefbenoit.com and uh, on my website you can find a link or you can contact me through my Instagram uh, Chu Ben Original <laughs> very easy okay thank you a lot for your sharing with us today Chu Ben a very uh, friendly Vietnamese titles that the locals give him so uh, uh, talking with you I have a very wonderful times knowing about more information about my country and especially Nuk Mam of his sauce Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, dear viewers, from Second Times uh, to take your time listening to me. And don't forget, choose the best, forget the rest. <laughs>